I guess this is episode six of this Youth Logic show. Uh, still, I have not decided what we're calling this thing yet. Obviously, I do not have the specific questions that Tyler is going to ask, but I heard a rumor that it has to do with dairy and like the dairy industry. And immediately I was brought back to a point, I think when I was 17, and I think the dairy, like one of the largest like dairy conglomerates hit me up. Uh, and I think I was competing for a bid on like some like big insights project in dairy. I just remember flying to Chicago and being so freaking excited. The Got Milk campaign is an iconic one for my generation, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously not working as well now. So excited to, to dive into it and talk a little bit of dairy so tyler what was the first question and what is even the basis of this somebody asked how can uh the dairy industry approach gen z so i don't think that the dairy industry is as far off on gen z as i'm sure everyone is actually telling them at least for me yeah milk does kind of play a nostalgic factor for me i grew up with it in the house my parents cooked with it for everything every single night i'd have rice krispies and bananas with cereal i'm sure a lot of other gen z kind of share like nostalgic sentiments with with milk i think that you can approach gen z by letting them know that it's natural right i think that we have this weird sort of distrust with it because we've been fed with a bunch of stuff which is the reality in most cases that a lot of this milk is messed with so we're not actually getting real milk i think retelling the story of milk is like a holistic wellness like milk is in that category right people since the beginning of the time milk i don't know the history but i don't know that's the angle that i would take right is gen z is kind of pivoting off of things like pop right we've talked about this going into olipop or poppy i actually think there's better health oriented arguments for dairy milk as opposed to almond milk or oat milk or this other bullshit that they're trying to push onto us it's actually way worse for you so i think it's a lot about how that story gets told i think it's in line with a lot of gen z kind of feelings and characteristics i think the second way and i think this is just as natural a way as the first one is people are forgetting gen z is learning how to cook now and it's not even like we've lived in a world where we've had to cook where money is no sort of issue at least for anyone in modern america right like if you're gen z you can make a job where you can at least uber eats doordash right now we're entering a time where it's not as fiscally advantageous to do that continuously and you're gonna start to see it impact your bank account if you're someone who's in gen z so i think that a large part of winning them for dairy is educating right how it's natural but it's also involved in many elements of the food process and foods that you already eat that you don't even know you eat cheese as an example i don't think anyone's not eating dairy or not drinking milk uh because of anything having to do with sustainability i think like i wouldn't even put those two things in the same bucket at all even though it is kind of a a common talking point that comes up i think a lot of and once again tyler check me on this but i don't think that almond milk is sustainably better than whole milk i actually think it's quite the inverse um so i'm not too sure last question is why do you think gen z has a bad view on dairy and milk so i think that just culturally with gen z i don't know something i've heard from a lot of young gen z women is oh dairy you know doesn't sit right with my stomach or i'm lactose intolerant i feel like that's something that's more prevalent uh, i feel like people just say that even though they're not now honestly i feel like it's at that point so i feel like we could go on and on about all of the different little reasons that gen z has a bad view on milk but i think the biggest one is during school and during our adolescence this was like pushed on us like that's when got milk was pushed on us i think gen z has entered an era of at least self-education or understanding where a lot of the things that were being shoved down our throats at that time maybe not have been the best or most advantageous for us to be like either consuming or spending our time on or doing or just learning i think all of those things so i think there's a sort of like inherent distrust there so you gotta walk it back like got milk like its brilliance was the reason of kind of almost its decline right the inherent of like got milk like the almost uh 
the exclusivity. It's like the marketing is built into the question. It's like, got milk? It's like, you got it? Like, got milk? Like, I don't know. I think that milk specifically, I think a way to make that transition uh, into consumers organically is picking where in the life cycle of Gen Z consumers in these sub in these subcultures where you can slide in. One of my fondest memories of milk, right after a workout, at least chocolate milk is a great recovery, great recovery mechanism absolutely needs to be leaned into. I don't know, we could put some more thought into that, but that's just me shooting from the hip. But I don't know, I think Gen Z has this kind of inherent distrust because you combine like those kind of cultural undertones, things that we're hearing, things that commonly get said with just the fact that it was associated with that era. Got milk just kind of seems a little bit sketchy, right? If you're trying to trick a bunch of little fucking kids into drinking your shit, it's like got milk, right? I don't know, I feel like even in fitness and in recovery, just jumping back to that, it's, I love Logan to death, but you look at what's in Prime, right? There, there's a way better argument for natural milk and some of these other things in fitness and in functionality and in like the holistic approach, which Gen Z is super fixated on. So yeah, I think those are, those are kind of like, I think those are some solid ideas on encapsulating the feelings about dairy. This is certainly a sector that I want to dive in more on just because of my love for beverage and my love for America and farmers being the backbone of this country. No, seriously, like yeah. like yeah. milk and the production of milk is a huge industry in this country. Uh, and I think it matters. And I think that these people more than anyone need to be ones that are helped and almost their hand held along down the path of, of like, hey, here's digital, here's da -da -da. Uh, here's how all these things work. It's like the only milk startup there are any milk related thing that I can think of innovation wise is like slate milk and their whole thing is like dairy free. So I don't know. Is it better that it's dairy free? Like, I don't know. So we're like back to your next show. But th those are the those are the kinds of questions. So if you have any on any other kinds of industries or maybe you're a farmer in Idaho and have something specific about dairy, maybe you work at Dairy Management Inc. and want to hire me again. I don't know. Ask at youthlogic.com. And as always, uh, if we do see something come in from Dairy Management Inc., we will send you a contract and an invoice. But if you're a farmer in Idaho, you get free advice. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And we'll get to as many questions as, as we can. Like dairy makes me da da da. Like, it's like dairy's natural as fuck. Unless you're lactose intolerant. If you're lactose intolerant, then it's just, it is real. They're kind of fucked. Which I am. And I crushed milk my whole childhood. <laughs>